Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is July 17th. The year is 2023, and this is a very special YouTube premiere, which means I'm live with you right now in the chat. Tonight, I'm going to teach you how to use your die cuts to make an angled birthday card, but guess what? This card slides and locks as well, and I know you're going to love it. I'm gonna demonstrate one for you, but I have several other samples to share with you, all that are part of the project sheet. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that. I provide that for free. You're gonna find that down in the video description below when tonight's premiere is over. That's gonna contain multiple pictures of each project, the cutting dimensions and all the supplies, and I'm gonna include a template in there for you as well. Now I wanna take a minute to tell you all about the live chat or how to comment if you're here watching the replay. I'd love to interact with you, but in order to do so, YouTube requires that you log into your YouTube account, which uses your Gmail address. Go ahead and do that now, because if you're here for the live chat, I'm gonna be able to answer your questions live right now. In addition to that, I wanna take one more opportunity to introduce you to that beautiful name in blue, Grace Hudson. Grace is here moderating with me tonight to help provide links for you while Gina Hawley is on maternity leave. All right, we're all set, let's get started. We're beginning with a piece of garden green cardstock, and this is kind of a little unusual. It's five and a half by ten and a half, and we're going to do some scoring, and we're going to do some cutting, and that's where this trimmer comes into play. You're going to be able to find all these products in my online store at lisasstampstudio.com. That light blade is for scoring. The dark blade is for cutting, and I love that they navigate up and down out of the way. You can keep them on the track at the exact same time, so you don't have to mess with blades. It has a clear cutting track which is gonna be really important for tonight's project. Let's start with the scoring. I'm gonna turn it the lengthwise, so this is 10 and a half across the top. And the first score line is gonna be just shy of four and a quarter. So I'm gonna line this up at the four and a quarter mark, and I don't do anything straight. So that little ledge here at the top with the trimmer to keep my cardstock nice and straight. There's also one at the bottom. Now you can see I'm lined up at four and a quarter, but we're gonna back this up. I'm talking just like a hair. It's not even a 16th of an inch, so I can't really measure it. I'm taking that light blade now, and we are going to score. The next one is at eight and a half inches, and you can see that this ends, but there's an extension here. Isn't that amazing? Love that because it goes well past 17 inches. Perfect if you're a scrapbooker. This one is gonna be at eight and a half inches, so I'm gonna line that up once again, and then we are going to score. All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way for just a minute. We're gonna come back to it. I'm gonna grab my bone folder. And what I want you to do now is I want you to crease on those score lines. So this is going to come down in half. Now, in order for this to close, that's why we had to kind of shimmy this over a little bit shy of the four and a quarter. Make sure you use that bone folder to reinforce those score lines. Really important when you're doing a fun fold. Check here and here and make sure that they're nice and even and we're gonna reinforce those as well. Now I'm gonna grab a pencil for this next one and I'm gonna bring back that trimmer. With the whole card closed, we're gonna use this just to measure right now before we cut. So I'm gonna open up that clear cutting guide and I'm taking this folded edge and I'm gonna line it up here at the one inch mark. Now, I love this trimmer for lots of reasons, but I also love that you have some smaller cutting dimensions and scoring dimensions on this side as well as this side. And that allows you to be able to hold a little bit more paper. So I'm gonna hold this at one inch and I'm gonna close up that trimmer guide. I'm not moving any blades, but I'm taking my favorite craft pencil and I'm making a mark there at the one inch mark right through that clear cutting track. Now I know you're not gonna be able to see it just yet, but I get tons of comments about this pencil because it's my favorite craft pencil ever. I have it linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. It's not a Stampin' Up! product, obviously, but the lead is very, very soft and the eraser is fantastic. It leaves no marring behind. Now that we have that mark, I'm gonna open up this flap. I'm gonna open up the whole card just so that there's no mistakes. And in essence, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an angle from that pencil line all the way down here to the corner. And once again, I know that's gonna be hard to find. I'm rummaging through my things for my little silver pencil that you all absolutely love. And I think I have it right here so that you can see a little bit better. I have this linked for you too, because many of you have asked me for it. So I'm just gonna make those little silver marks though that you can see just a little bit better on camera. So we've got one here and one here. We're just gonna connect the dots. But this is where this clear cutting guide comes into play. 
I'm going to close the door and I'm literally just going to navigate the paper. So I can see I've got this one here and I'm looking to spin the bottom just a little bit to get that one there. And you want to line them up the very best that you can. Now you're not going to want to cut from the bottom. Do you see how narrow this is? If you've ever tried to do that, you'll notice the paper tries to bunch up, right? Because it's so narrow. You're going to want to cut from a straight edge at the top or better yet, you can do what I like to do is what I call anchoring the blade. Once I have this aligned, I'm literally going to drop my cutting track and my blade now is anchored in the middle and you can cut up and you can cut down and that's going to give you that fantastic angle. Now I'm going to throw this piece away and now you're going to be able to see how this closes. I'm going to add my designer series paper next. Now while this piece right here looks easy peasy, right? Normal. And this paper comes from the designer series paper stack called, I had a look, Fresh as a Daisy. And I love that one side is themed with Stampin' Up, but their double-sided papers include a very generic pattern on the other side, which can be used for lots of things, which I love. So let's go ahead and let's attach this for right now. I'm gonna bring in that silicone craft sheet. I love this because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means if I get a little zealous here with the adhesive, which I often do, or my liquid glue, it's not gonna end up on my work surface and I won't have to fight that sticky spot. This is a one-time purchase and you're going to find it in my online store and you're going to love it. Now, because we're going to create an opening for the slide and lock for this card, I'm going to recommend that you put some extra adhesive here because there's going to be an opening. So I'm going to add a little bit more adhesive and then I'm going to open this up and I'm going to lay it here so it's easier for you to see. Slight angle is going to make it easier for me to align this. This is a quarter inch smaller than the actual card base itself. And I'm just doing my best to get this centered as best I can. And there we go. But now we're going to want to add designer series paper here. You're probably thinking, oh heavens, not hard, I promise. We've got a piece of designer series paper here, exact same package, exact same pattern. I'm using this size. These dimensions are going to be in your project sheet, but for this time, you're going to mark it at three quarters of an inch. So you remember how we lined it up for one inch for the card base? We're going to make it a quarter inch smaller. So now I'm at three quarters of an inch. I'm closing the door and I'm taking my pencil once again and I'm making a mark right inside that track. And again, let's bring in that silver pencil so that you can see. So there's one here and we're going to come down to the corner. So again, we're just going to connect those dots. So let's go ahead and let's line that up inside here. I'm closing this. And of course, this is a smaller piece. I'm going to navigate the blade up this time so it's in the right position. I'm looking here at the top and looking at the bottom. I'm going to close it. And I know it's difficult for you to see on camera, but you can see very, very well in person. And again, I'm just navigating that paper just to make sure those edges are where they're supposed to be in the track. And then we are going to cut. This piece we're not going to need. This is the piece that's going to fit on the flap. And then once again, we're just going to come in really quickly and we're just going to erase those pencil marks because we don't want those to show in our project. Okay, now that that's all finished, we are going to open this up and let me just show you. This is going to fit here. So you're going to have that same margin. Let's go ahead and flip that upside down. Now, for those of you that like liquid glue, go for it. I'm not a glue girl. I use too much and it always causes a lot of oozing problems. So if you're going to use liquid glue, perfect. Just don't get too close to your edges so that when you put this together, it's not going to spread outside that seam. And then I'm going to turn this again to make it friendly for my hand and I'm looking for that border all the way around and then once I think it looks pretty good we're going to just kind of navigate that and we'll stick that down. All right now we are ready for some of the fun part. Now we're going to do some die cutting. Now you're going to notice that this is going to eventually go like this which creates the angle to this card but we're going to have to create an opening or a mechanism and this is where your die cuts come into play. Now I'm going to start by telling you, you can use any die cut that you want, as long as the length is about two and one eighths of an inch. A little bit shorter is probably not going to slide enough and too big is going to slide too much. Trust me, I've tried them all. The track opening is going to need to be big enough to fit the dimensionals, which is going to create the slide mechanism on this. This will make more sense in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to look on here visually and I know the card is closed. I'm not worried about that just yet. And I know I want about a half an inch from this side of the die cut. Now where you put this is entirely up to you. But for this card, I'm going to just kind of imagine it's going to be right around here. Now, obviously this is going to slip all over, right? So let me show you what I love to use. This is the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. 
again, linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. This is the same roll that I have had for over two years now. I love it. You're going to be able to take this and you can rip it in either direction, but it's going to give you smaller pieces and it's going to hold that die in place. So let me just show you. I'm just going to look and try to get this as straight as possible here. And once I'm pretty happy with that, we're going to tack that down with the tape. Now this is repositionable and it won't ruin your paper, which you're absolutely going to love. So now we're ready to go. So we're going to open this up and I'm going to put this through my die cutting machine, which is just off camera, but I'll be right back. Now I've just die cut it and I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to give you an important tip. Remember you are going through two layers here, not only the cardstock, but the designer series paper. Every die cutting machine cuts differently. Check from the back to make sure that it's a die cut all the way through, because if it's not, you can put it right back through because it's all tacked down in place. Now, because I know that's brand new tape, I'm going to grab my take your pick tool, kind of like my third hand, and we're just going to carefully start lifting this and releasing that paper because I can use this tape over and over again because we are going to use it again right now. So I'm just removing that. What's inside this die we do not need. So I'm just going to tack that here. So we're going to throw that away. But now we need to connect this to that angle, don't we? So what we're going to do is we're going to put this underneath for just a moment and close this, which allows us a little bit of a window. And here comes that pencil once again. I am going to trace that opening with my pencil and I want to make sure that I'm able to see it. I pressed a little bit too hard and broke that lead. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to do the exact same thing, but on this side. Now, I know the paper is a little bit dark, but bear with me. I'm trying to hope that maybe you can kind of see that. If not, you can kind of get the idea at home. You are going to mimic that shape on the pencil line. Remember, with this specific die, it's going to die cut the inside circumference. So don't align the outside. So I'm looking here and I'm doing my very best to align these the very best that I can without getting my head in your camera view. So I'm looking a little bit left and a little bit right. And then we are going to use that tape once again. And I'm going to tack that down here. And I'm going to tack that down here. And now I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. Now you might be wondering, can this go in without paper? Of course, it's not going to hurt anything. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. And just like once before, we're going to look from the back side. And you want to make sure that that's cut all the way through and it looks like it does. And I am going to release this once again. When the tape is new, obviously it's a little bit more tacky than when you use it over and over again. But I love that there's no waste, so you can repeat using this. I want to say about a half a dozen times. You can put it on the handle of your die cutting machine or right back here on the cartridge so it's ready to go. And then, of course, we're not going to need this piece. Now, if you're wondering where this die came from, it came from something fancy. And it's one of my favorite die sets. I love die sets that have multiple shapes and staggered sizes which makes layering a breeze. So this one actually is part of that die set. Let's go ahead and put that off to the side and then let's flip this card over and let me show you. This is gonna go like this. Do you see? It's literally perfect. So now we have what I'm calling the track. Now we have to work on the pieces that are gonna work in the component here so that it slides and locks. So let me move this off camera. And now I'm going to bring in a piece of basic white cardstock, and this is just a piece of scrap. And we're going to do some stamping here. And of course, you're going to use any image you want. And I've got lots of samples to share with you today. I'm going to use my Memento Black ink pad, and I've pulled out this adorable rooster image, and it's from the Hey Chuck stamp set. Fun and whimsical, isn't it? It has coordinating dies, and you can buy it as a bundle, which will save you 10%. Now, one of the reasons I love the dies is you see the weather vane and you see the sun. So those are additional pieces that are not part of the stamp set. They're going to allow you really to provide a lot of coordination to your projects. So let's go ahead and let's ink this up. I like to travel on my ink pad because it's a sizable stamp. Make sure I've got everything covered. And when I'm using red rubber, I always check just to make sure I've got everything I need. Now, we are going to die cut this in a shape. So I'm not going to put that too close to the edge so I have room for my die. I'm cleaning that off camera and there's that fence image. Now there's die for this as well. So I'm going to work over here to the side. I'm going to do one, two, and three. And you're going to see what fun things we're going to do with that. Cleaning that off camera as well. I'm going to cap that because we don't really need it for right now. But let's talk a little bit about coloring. Let me bring you in just a little bit closer. Many of you tell me you are intimidated with large images and I get that. 
but the Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers are going to make your life so easy. Now they color in a combination, which means there's a dark and a light shade and they are purchased this way. And I like to separate them on my table because oftentimes the caps are closely related in color. And you can use the dark first or the light first, it doesn't really matter. But because I'm heavy handed, I typically use the light. Now I said typically for a reason, because tonight we're gonna do something different. This is pecan pie, my new favorite brown. And when your ink is dry, I'm gonna add a small amount of that. And I'm using small circular motions because I like to preserve the tip on these nice little brush sides here at the bottom. The secret to using alcohol-based markers is you need to be patient. You need to let that first layer of alcohol ink evaporate so that there's a no wet surface for you to start adding the next color. Now I'm gonna teach you some blending techniques right here that's lots of fun and you can see the versatility of these Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers. Here comes the light shade of that same color and look what I'm doing. I'm literally going right over what I already have. Now while you might be able to see the differentiation in color so far, don't worry, that's gonna change. I've just rotated my brush because I'm slightly using the side versus the tip. And I wanna make sure that I have equal coverage all the way around. And I'm not worried if I skip a spot, but we're gonna do something neat. I'm gonna let that evaporate, but do you see what happens as the alcohol evaporates from the marker as you can start to see where it starts to blend. This is one of the new colors. It's called Wild Wheat, and I'm using the lightest shade tonight. Now, of course, there's a light and a dark, but I'm using just the light by itself to do some blending here. Again, let that evaporate. Using that thicker tip, I'm gonna come inside of here. I'm skipping that little area and I'm gonna provide some color here, all underneath here. And again, I'm using a light hand, small circular motions. But here's where the beauty comes in. Are you ready? We are gonna blend this right over the last colors. And we're gonna do lots of circular motions because it's going to drag the colors together. I know you're thinking, wow, I didn't know I could do that. But isn't that fun? Let that sit and process. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about that little area here. Let me find my old olive marker here. And this I decided I wanna give him a little bit of green here because I'm gonna carry that into those feathers. I'm not gonna color that because I have one all done for you. But it allows me to add a little bit extra cover to create some dimensions here as well. Now, if you decide you want more color, you can go back over this with this, this is the light. And we're gonna blend, blend, blend. I did the exact same thing here on the wings by blending and again, letting it process. And I know we're going a little bit fast, but I'm gonna drag that again into here. And then you can just create lots of variations of tone. And look at that, isn't that amazing? I love the way it turns out. Now, I did take a die and die cut this. I want you to know that I colored these with the exact same shades that I did the lower portion of this little rooster. All right, so I used circle dies and I wanna show you the ones that I used. Let me push that off to the side. So I die cut the rooster using these, reach for the stars. Now I think that this is a little bit of a sleeper product because I think we overlook the fact that these are graduated sizes of circles that can be used with everything. So I use the largest one here to die cut my chicken. But because this mechanism is gonna to need to do some sliding, I needed a slightly bigger circle in order to give this some weight. And that's where I brought in these. This is the Stylus Shapes dies. And let me show you the one that I pulled out here. This is a staggering size as well. This is probably one of my most beloved die cutting sets that I have, simply because of the shapes, the stitching, which is trending, and of course those graduated sizes. So let's push that off and let me bring in those pieces. And you're gonna need two of those. So I made these match my card base. You can do whatever you want. So these are garden green. I'm gonna put one of these off to the side and then we are gonna put these two together. So I'm gonna flip that over. You see that? Not pretty, is it? This is why you don't wanna color on the actual card base itself. This is what the alcohol blends markers do to real good quality cardstock because you absolutely want to have that bleeding. That's what causes the blending. Now I am looking really hard to try to keep this as even as possible. And you might be thinking, Lisa, you can barely even see the green. I know, and that's okay. I wanted stability for this. So let's go ahead now and let's move over to those fence pieces that I created before you join me. And I did die cut those because there's dies available. We're gonna use those as well. 
And then I took the liberty of taking the Daffodil Delight cardstock. And let me bring out that die. Remember that sun? So I die cut two of those ahead of time and I have them here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little connection here. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna use the multi-purpose liquid glue. Now, you might be looking at this going, that's not the multi-purpose liquid glue. And you might be right, because it looks like this when you buy it. The tip on this is quite broad, to be honest with you, to get in those little tiny areas. And while I absolutely love this glue because it's strong and dries quickly, I cannot get it in tiny spots. So I purchased these precision tip glue applicators and I put the glue down inside. Now I love it because it has a silicone lid and I love the fact that when you store it straight up, you don't have any problems with clogging. I am going to shake the glue down. It is thick, but you can see how tiny I can get these. Isn't this fantastic? So I'm gonna put a couple little dots right here and you might recall I said to you, this is very, very strong glue. So you don't need to go crazy and we're gonna connect these. So I'm using those die cut rays to provide that alignment. And then we're just gonna give that a good press. And like I said, it dries very, very quickly. So you're gonna be able to use this like literally right away. I like to do all my gluing on here. As I had mentioned to you, the glue won't stick. Before you put this away, squeeze it through that silicone craft sheet. No one likes a gunky tip. And then make sure you put that lid back on and you're gonna store it vertically. I have these linked for you on my website under shop, craft room favorites. I'm gonna push that off to the side and we are ready to start assembling. So let's come over here to the card base and let's talk about how we're gonna get this to work. So we initially obviously have our image, but you know this back piece, this piece is really important. This is what's gonna allow the two pieces to come together. Now, since this is stitched, I'm gonna make sure that the wrong side is facing up because we are gonna maneuver it behind this opening. Now, this is why it's important that you find a die that's not too long, because if you have a circle that's bigger, it's not going to slide all the way because it's going to get caught here on the inside seam. So I'm just going to navigate this where I think it's going to fit. So I'm just going to kind of pull this up and you can see that it's filling that slot. We're going to turn this upside down and I'm going to give this a, just a quick look to kind of see if it's halfway and it looks like it is. Again, making sure it's covered. Remember that post-it labeling and cover-up tape? Well, we're going to use that once again. We're going to hold that down and then we're going to flip this over. Here comes the trick. Dimensionals. I also learned the hard way. Don't use a lot of these. So I'm going to take one of these with my take your pick tool. It's going to extend my reach a little bit and the shape of these dimensionals is going to work fantastic. So you want to work between the opening as far to the right without impeding it or stopping it as possible. So there's one. And in this case, I'm going to use one more. So obviously, if your image is a different shape or a different size and you've kind of worked it to see if it's going to fit, one might be sufficient. But this is a good size circle. I'm giving those a good push. And then I'm going to release that paper backing, which exposes now the other sticky side. This image now is going to go right on top of here. But just like on the inside, we want to make sure it's going to cover the circumference of that opening. And of course, I'm looking to try to make it as straight as I can and then we're gonna tack that in place. Now let's talk about that sun. In my case, I decided I wanted to use dimensionals. So I'm gonna flip that upside down here. And let's take a couple of these and we're gonna stagger these here on the back side. You know, one of the other things about dimensionals, don't be cheap with them. They're so inexpensive, but you want them balanced on your card, especially if you're going to mail it. Otherwise it's gonna come out all lopsided when it goes through the mail meter at the post office. So I'm going to put this up here near the top. I'm going to stay within the circumference of the garden green cardstock, and I'm going to attach that here. And that seam bugged the dickens out of me. So guess what? I stamped a greeting from that stamp set that says rise and shine, and that's going to cover it. So I'm going to use a little bit of my stamp and seal plus here on the back. This also is very, very strong. And I'm going to put that right over that seam, looking to center it the best I can. There we go, and let's talk about the fence. Right now, what I want you to do is I want you to give this a cursory look. Now, I have tried numerous ways to put the fence on, and believe it or not, my very favorite way was using mini dimensionals. So these are pre-cut smaller sizes than the one we just used in the track. I can't be bothered with cutting them up, so I buy these and I love them. 
So we're going to need to put some of these together in order for this to open properly. So let me show you how this is going to work. This is going to slide over to the right. Okay. You know why it doesn't slide? I didn't take the tape off. All right. I got all excited. So let's remove these. And again, I'm going to save those so I can use them again. Now it's going to slide. Do you see it already? This is where the slide mechanism comes in. So I'm going to move this over to the side and now we're going to slide this right underneath. Now you can see why it's important where you put any decorations on here. So let's talk about that. I'm going to take that first fence. I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm using mini dimensionals. I'm going in the middle of each of the fence posts. You, again, you want the stable for mailing. I'm not working anything too high or too low because it's going to impede on this. This is going to go either under or over, which means that dimensional better be low enough, right? So I'm coming all the way here to the base of the cardstock and I'm going to attach that. And I'm going to give it a little peek. Yep, we are free. Nothing doesn't appear to be touching it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm working towards the center of each post. Now you might be thinking already, those fences are going to be connected and too long. You're right. So I'm going to give you another tip. So we're going to start underneath here. And I decided to put this one, oh, just about here. Now I'm looking to try to make this that it looks symmetrical across. So let's go ahead and tack that one in place. And then we have this one, which you can see is way too long. I'm reaching for my scissors and let's cut off this last one. You know, when it has a die cut, it makes your life so, so easy. So we're going to flip that upside down. And then again, we're going to add those in the center of the post, remove that backing. Now I can't wait to show you these other cards. This can either now go over the top or under the bottom, completely up to you and just create that visual appearance here. All right. So there we go. We have over and we have under. So the card slides and it opens, but it's kind of underwhelming on the inside, right? So I took the liberty of creating this. I took a piece of white cardstock. I stamped another image from that stamp set with a birthday cake, added my birthday greeting. Let's add a little adhesive to the back side here. And now this is going to get mirrored here on the inside, leaving that small border all the way around. And we'll tack that in place. Oh my gosh, how fun is this? And again, I know I kind of um my game here on this one because of the fence, but let me show you some others I think that you're really going to enjoy. This next one uses the Waves of Inspiration stamp set. Fantastic for those people who love the ocean or for masculine cards. Now let me share with you what I did with this one. This time I used designer series paper once again, but I actually stamped on it. So there's that wave underneath there. Stamped my greeting and my birds all from the same stamp set. But I used that pelican and that pylon to create the focal point. And then once again, this slides and then this opens. And then look at, we've got some wave on the inside that says, let's celebrate you for another fantastic birthday card. Obviously this doesn't have the decoration at the bottom, although I did do some stamping and I do have one other for you. Now this one comes from a combination of greeting stamp sets, believe it or not. So this comes from kindest expressions and I made a sympathy card using this greeting. And then I added some words and decorations from this lasting joy. And this one I'm finding very versatile. I love the images and that it comes with a variation of words. There are no dies or punches for that. So please keep that in mind. Here is this card. So the designer series paper here is the star of the show and this is Countryside Inn. So I used some boho blue and night of navy and I did some white heat embossing here. Flat back pearl for the center. Again, that's going to slide. Different paper. Did you notice how I mixed and matched? Isn't that fun? Gotta love Stampin' Up's color coordination. And then on the insides, it says, I'm so sorry. Really, really fun and quite an easy fold. I think that you'll agree. Now, as always, I love to know your favorite. Do me a favor, pop in the comments right now and tell me which one you prefer. Your feedback is so important for me. I love to use that while I'm designing to give you a good variation of projects. Now, there's a few things you need to know before we go, including that next date that I will be back with you with more project ideas. The first is this. Oh, you're not going to want to miss it. You spend in July and you're going to earn in August. Stampin' Up! is offering bonus days right now. With a qualifying order, you're going to get a coupon to use next month on your order. Head over to my website and you'll get all the information there under shop. And Stampin' Up! has brand new products out that are called online exclusives, which means they're not in the catalog. 
You'll find those on my website as well under shop because there's some fantastic things there. Look at that little truck punch. Isn't that cute? I think you might be wanting that for the holidays that are quickly approaching. And then I want to make sure you know all about Stamp Studio memberships. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you have signed up for this where I provide you a tutorial every Monday in your inbox for $5 a month. It is a membership. These projects are not shared anywhere else. I designed them specifically for this. We have beautiful duplicatable cards. Sometimes they're a little bit stepped up, but they're intended for you to be able to use to teach classes with or to teach others with, or perhaps you'd like to mass produce cards. The cards are lovely and I know that you're going to enjoy that. That's level one, but there's also this level two. So if you like to up your game a little bit, you're gonna want level two that includes a fun fold, a discount in my PDF tutorial library, and then I do five random giveaways every single month in product. All right, mark your calendars and join me for Monday, July 24th. I will be back with you here in the live chat and brand new projects to share with you. If you've liked tonight's video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It is a huge help for me. And subscribe to my channel. And you can also subscribe to my newsletter over on my website, scroll to the bottom. I'd love to share more information with you every single month and more inspiration weekly. Thank you so much, Grace, for all your help tonight. I look forward to having you all join me next Monday. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.